So guys, have you watched the first part, if not yet, then please, go and watch the first part, it's absolutely worth watching. The link of first part is below. Ok, now I will show you the second part, released has, Lost Bullet 2, so sit back, relax and enjoy. Immediately after the incidents of the first part, Lino wakes up in a hospital bed, following his crash through the windshield of Shiraz's car. Julia, who seems to have taken over the role of Shiraz, as the chief police officer, informs him about the fates of the two perpetrators. Areski, the main corrupt officer from the first part, who had killed Chief Shiraz, has gone missing, as he has left his wife and baby behind, to flee out of country. Areski's partner in duty and in crime, named Marco, had been left handcuffed, at a barn by Lino, after he had killed the mechanic's beloved younger brother, named Quentin. At present, Lino immediately asks Julia, about Marco's arrest, knowing that, this man would be the only lead, toward finding Resky. However, Julia replies that, by the time, she had reached the barn, Marco had gotten rid of the handcuffs somehow, and had fled the scene. Six months pass, and Lino recovers from all his injuries, but the man stays determined, to find Marco and Resky. Almost obsessed with this very personal mission of his, he regularly stalks Oreski's wife, named Stella, in the hopes that, her estranged husband, would contact her someday. Stella herself has given up hope of this, and she even knows about Lino's actions, and tells him to stop his obsession. The police force also tries to convince Lino, to do the same, but the whole stalking pays off, when one night, three armed men break into Stella's apartment. Lino, who was keeping an eye on things from nearby, intervenes to save the woman and her child. He fights with all those, and killed them. While the intruders are revealed, to have been sent by a rescue, or the men he worked for. Almost as a reward for his actions, Julia takes Lino back into the police squad, and a year later, he is seen on the streets once again, driving a repaired and modified Renault 21, the same iconic car, that once belonged to Shiraz. All this while, though, Lino remains unaware of the fact that, Julia and her boss, the police deputy Moss, had indeed arrested Marco from the barn that day. While, they had decided to keep this a secret, from the vengeful Lino. They were aware that, Marco and Oreski were not the only ones, working with the criminals, and they now hoped, to bring all the corrupt police officers down. The main villain this time, happens to be the, corrupt head of the narcotics department of police, named Alexander Race. Although, Race himself never makes an appearance. Instead, it is always his trusted henchman, named Yuri, who throws up all the problems in Lino's way. As it turns out, Race was the main coordinator, making Oreski and Marco do, whatever they did, and so, he now wants Marco dead. However, since the man has been holed up by the police, in a remote barn under witness protection, he and his men, need to first look for him, and confirm his location. Once they do so, one of them calls up Lino, and tells him that, his dying adopted mother, wants to meet him, and gives him the address of the barn. They know well that, Lino would not be able to contain himself, and would kill Marco, which would be extremely beneficial to them. Lino goes over to the place, and finds Marco, but he does contain himself, to find more answers about, why his own police force, had kept this a secret from him. As he rushes to the headquarters, and questions Moss about the same, then Yuri and his men arrive at the place, and try to forcibly take Marco away, since they work directly under the narcotics department. Despite wanting to do so, Moss cannot stop this from happening. Since, the bureaucratic order does not allow her, to question her superiors. However, Lino remains ready for such an occurrence, and he uses a flashbang grenade, to create a distraction, and take Marco away from the police station. After a long action scene, he finally drives away, with his new hostage Marco, stowed away at the back of his Renault 21. Later, Lino makes relationship with Stella, since her husband had left her and her baby, and after Lino saves her from the intruders, who were there to kill her, Stella and Lino, grow close friends, and then lovers. The man takes on the responsibility of the baby as well, and Stella now gives him her approval, to do whatever important mission, he has set out to do. The film introduces a new Spanish police officer, named Alvaro, who used to be an acquaintance of Shiraz as well. Through their unlawful help in the go-fast trade, Oreski and Marco, had duped the Spanish officials as well, since the drug was mostly passed on to Spain from France. For this reason, Alvaro is also in search of Marco, and Lino uses this, to somehow get the man away from the French police, who were trying to protect him. In this while, Julia calls up Lino, and asks him to give Marco up too, saying that, 
the French police were preparing a case against Trace, for which, they needed Marco, to lead to incriminating evidence. But Lino denies, trusting the police anymore, and intends to bring his brother's killer to justice himself. Then he informs Alvaro that, he is their target, and then, manages to hand him over to the Spanish police officials, who make their way past the French border. All this while, Lino is being chased by Julia and her men, and by the time, she catches up to him, but the trunk of his car is empty, as Marco is already being taken back to Spain. However, tight security at all the borders, makes Alvaro and his men to take a different route, and here, they are intercepted by Reyes's men. They are chased by these corrupt policemen, and Lino gets a hint of this from before. He rushes to make sure, Marco is kept safe, and makes use of the iconic sharp extensions, at the bumper of his car, that featured in the first part of the movie as well. Only this time, the master mechanic has managed, to pass electricity through these extensions, destroying every enemy car in mere minutes. Ultimately though, Alvaro's van crashes, and Marco escapes, to be swiftly taken into Julia's car. Fearing that, this meant, Marco would be spared any punishment, Lino chases Julia, and tries to break down her car as well, but the woman had also been, an illegal car mechanic and racer, before her time in the police, and she manages to destroy Lino's car. The French police arrive, and arrest Lino, even though, Julia does not want them to do so, but they have been ordered directly by Moss. Julia calls up her boss, and threatens to hand Marco over to the Spanish police, if Lino is arrested, but she is also ultimately bound to her duties. Julia too is now angry that, a deal of protection and forgiveness, had been made with Macro, if he helped the police. At the same time though, Yuri pulls up to the place, and just as, he is about to kill all three of them, an injured Alvaro runs in, and shoots Yuri and his partner dead in their car. Then Marco enters the police car, in which, Lino has been kept handcuffed, and he drives away to save himself. But Lino does manage to stop him, and they now seem to have crossed the Spanish border, as Lino drags Marco into a local restaurant. Inside the restaurant, Lino asks the server to inform the police, but Marco has one last trick up his sleeve. He suddenly stabs Lino twice with a knife. Although, the injury is severe, and Lino manages to stay alive, and Julia now, reaches the scene with her shotgun, armed and ready. But Marco has taken the server hostage, and he demands that, Julia throw away her gun. As Lino also agrees, Julia has no option, but to agree to the demand, since, they do not want to risk the life of an innocent bystander. However, she manages to distract Marco in the process, and a scuffle follows, in which, she accidentally shoots the man in the chest. As Julia sits in shock, thinking of, what she has just done, having fatally shot, the only witness their case had, Lino shoots Marco a second time, putting an end to the corrupt policemen. While Lino does so possibly, to save Julia from any official blame, to make it look like, he was the one, who had killed the witness. Lino also in a way, avenges the death of his brother, by putting an end to his murderer. Back at the police headquarters, Julia tells Moss the truth about, what had happened, but the deputy insists that, the report, that is to be filed, needs to mention that, it was Lino, who had killed the witness, and not the police chief herself. Julia however, has had enough of lying for Moss, and she now finally walks away, quitting the police service, while Lino remains arrested. Later, a man walks into a car scrapyard, and asks for a very specific item. A wrecked Renault 21, the same, that once belonged to Shiraz, and was then used by Lino, had been brought into the scrapyard, and destroyed, while the items inside it, had been carefully kept away. These items, including the lucky charm, that Shiraz carried in his car, are now taken away by this man, who is now revealed to be Reski. The corrupt police officer from the first film, remains unseen throughout the second part, only to make a brief appearance at the end. So guys, finally, we are done with the second part also. Now I'm taking rest, we'll be back with another good recap, until then enjoy.